Welcome back, guys. It's me, Radar. It's so I'll be the first to admit that I watch a lot of movies, and I've spent a lot of hours playing video games. All in the name of research. Mostly. <laughs> anyway, I have noticed a few things. Some obscure and some pretty blatant references in both genres. I'm not doing a top 10 or a top 5 for that matter. I just wanted to share a few things that, you know, that stuck out in my mind. There are many, many game references in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I mean, come on. Scott practically lived in a video game. That was the whole point. But do you remember when Scott and Knives were on their date? They were playing a uh, game called Ninja Ninja Revolution. That was obviously inspired by Konami's famous arcade game hit, Dance Dance Revolution. Pretty cool. And what do the Evil Dead series and Duke Nukem have in common? Well, unless you've been in a cave for the last several decades, then you know what I'm talking about here. Of course, Duke and Ash use many of the same catchphrases as you know. What some people might not know is that Duke Nukem's 3D cover art was heavily inspired by the Army of Darkness movie poster. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you do, because the similarities are scary. But if you did notice this, then you're as much of a geek as I am. Congrats. Panned as a full-length commercial in the 1980s, The Wizard featured numerous video games and accessories for the NES. Most notably, Super Mario Bros. 3, which became the highest-selling video game of all time. It was unveiled towards the end of the movie during a game tournament. Of course, let's not forget about the Power Glove. This control for the NES boasted that you could make simple movements with your hand and, and the game would respond. Unfortunately, the glove itself suffered many technical issues and was ranked one of the worst controllers ever made. Though according to Lucas, the power glove was bad. It was bad, all right, Lucas. You have no idea just how bad it was. Or how about this? A game reference right inside another video game. But, you know, that's not totally out of the realm of possibility here, right? Naughty Dog, for example. They were pretty clever here, throwing in numerous little Easter eggs to former titles. The Last of Us being at the top here for me. You know, because that was the last Naughty Dog game I really played through. Just keep your power gloves off for a There's a part in the game where Joel and Ellie are moving through, uh, you know, a, a destroyed toy store. There's really nothing of real note here, you might, you know, you might say. But if you go to one of the corner shelves, you see a board game referencing Uncharted. If you all remember Uncharted, that was the, you know, that was the popular hit from Naughty Dog before, featuring Nathan Drake. And is it me, or does Nathan and Joel look eerily alike? Well, <laughs> I guess if a character, mo character model works, why mess with a good thing, right? In Back to the Future 2. Yep, we're back to Back to the Future again. Yeah, <laughs> big old geek here. But, the Wild, gun the wild Gunman game cabinet in Cafe 80s? was actually, it was specifically made for the film. Wild Gunman was 
was an actual light gun game for the NES and the Nintendo Famicom. But, you know, it really wasn't released as an arcade cabinet. Most of the sound effects that you hear in the movie are from the game, but the artwork featured in the game was redone. In actuality, the graphics for the home consoles were a lot better. And, well, these are just a few things that I found interesting. How about you? Any favorite game or movie where there's a nice little gem to be found? But, you know, that's it for me. I've run on long enough. Y'all got suggestions for a future show? Maybe picks to share for a Sunday signage? Well, you can Twitter me at RadarCup or email me at 4bstudios at yahoo.com. That's F-O-U-R-B studios at yahoo.com. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, that's all I got.